All right, so this is the demonstration on how to start your shattered value drawing as well as a few other tips in creating it. All right, so I'm starting with my little drawing over here on my laptop next to me. I've got this little picture of a, a head of a cat, so I'm just going to start with the outside lines of the head because if I can look at it, it's got you know eyes that are floating in the middle. It has some other details as well, so I'm just going to... Turn the focus. Sort of lightly drawing. Just the outside shape. My second lines are a little bit better than my first ones. And I'm going to come, have to come back in here a little bit and fix this up. Now, I said in my other directions not to add any detail lines on the inside. So these would sort of count here because they're sort of these floating lines. Now I can sort of do something with it. Now, my cat, people are going to, if you have a cat or if you have another animal, you're going to say, wow, I really want some eyes in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... eyes going but I'm gonna leave them like that and I'm gonna do there's some other lines down here from sort of the the, 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 the nose ish area but I am gonna give it a little a little cat snoot so I can kind of say okay that is a little cat and then I have this other line down here. All right, so I got my pretty decent little cat. Now, what I will do is I will come back in here and I'm going to connect these lines. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect that one just for the heck of it, okay? So that these are all shapes that are totally connected. Kind of like if you're using Autodesk Sketchbook and you're using the fill tool if you went to fill it and it was broken, it would like bleed out and it wouldn't really work. So make sure those are kind of all connected like so. So once you have yours done, and I've said to make sure that yours is a little bit bigger than your hand, and I'm about right, I could have made it a little bit bigger and it's a little bit to one side of the page, but it's not too bad, but pretty much try to get it in the center, like larger than your hand size. So now what I need to do is I need to come in and I need to draw some curved lines across my paper. And you're going to just do about six or eight of them. So here's kind of like one line. It's a nice little line. Then I'm going to kind of go off the page. I'm going to go this way. That. And I'm going to go this way. That's two. That's three. Four. And you may only need a five or six. Go five. And that's probably pretty good. I'm going to do six right there. So that's plenty. Now, on your drawing, yours is going to be much smaller than mine. Um, I have an entire sheet of paper. You're only going to be doing half this much shading. So now what we have to do next is now you have to you're going to be shading and creating gradual value changes on each one inside every single little shape that's in there like this is a shape 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 here this is a shape there so to do that I'm gonna start out with some sort of smallish shapes to show you how this goes 
Okay, so I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to create a gradual value scale. So gradual value scale. And we will have done this in class. Okay, is where you have go from a dark value to a little less pressure to a little less pressure to a little less pressure less and less and less. And if I see a line there, I can just kind of go back, do a little fill. So I can get that really good gradual change from the really dark to the really light. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I, the viewer cannot really see my pencil lines. All right, so the more I go, so if I do big lines like this, what happens is it's really hard to fill all that in and you can see that from a mile away and you can say, oh, they were rushing. So definitely don't want to see that. Okay, want to see small marks, not the big marks. And I always see kids starting out like really well, like, you know, their five, first five, six, seven, eight shapes, nine shapes are really great. And then their last like four or five are not so good. So really try your hardest to get some really good value changes throughout the whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do mine here. And then, you know, you want to start letting up about halfway in. And now I'm going to have to kind of go back and fill this in a little bit. And I'm going to make sure that's all filled in. And I'm going to make this a little darker. And then I'm going to bring my value out a little bit more. So I'm just layering it back out. I'm going to bring that out a little bit more in here. that a little bit more in here because I want that really to be gradual okay that looks pretty good that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that now now we're just going to rotate our paper and I and I say rotate the paper because I like to make marks in a very specific way and if I'm having to like move my hand around that kind of makes me a little nuts so like when I have, I have you guys use sharpies it'll be sort of gradual so I like to sort of pull so however you're most comfortable we want to keep that going you know, because this gets repetitive, but, and one thing you can do also is once you really start going with the, your value and all these are sort of dark and light, you can take a piece of paper and you can hold it over it, and that way you're not smudging up your drawing and getting your hand all totally dirty, and you can just do that one little section, okay? So now, let's see, I'm going to turn it like this. So I'm going to turn it like this, and I'm going to actually go from dark to light this way, and what you're trying to do is you want to make sure that that the this area here is next to an area here that's a different in value, is far different in value as you can. So if I go from light from dark here to light here, it's going to be really light right here. So really it's pretty gonna be pretty different from all these values until it hits right up into here because really light all the way up into here. We got really darks, dark mediums, mediums, and then the light's only right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go this way. Going a little fast. So I saw some lines in here. I'm gonna bring that out a little darker. Come back in, fill that in a little bit. You know, small marks are best. Okay, but I can still see that line there. Okay, that's what I'm what I'm going for because if you have if you go from dark to light and then dark to light here, those whole shapes, they sort of disappear and you don't get the shattered effect, which is the kind of the cool effect. Okay. And then I'm just going to rotate it again. So I'm going to maybe rotate it and I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go dark to light this way. You know, and the more times I rotate it and I'm going to change it pretty quickly. Because it doesn't, there's not a lot of, area there in this little shape okay but again I've got this you can see that line in here because of the value difference between this section here and this section here okay and I'm just going to go 
do the exact same thing over the entire drawing. And again, make sure that you kind of go back in, let up on that, fill in those little spots. If you're having trouble with your gradual value changes and you're having trouble getting a light value, you know, you can go back and you can hold the pencil back closer to the eraser and that way you can't, it's harder to make a darker value than if you've got it like down in here. Okay, like I was pressing pretty hard there and I still got a pretty light value. So if you're getting to like this area in here and you're like, Mr. Davis, I can't get any lighter than that, you know, bring your, pen, bring your hand back on your pencil and then you can do some really, really light marks like rather easily. Okay, until you get really good at being able to like hold the pencil firmly with control but but letting up and knowing there's difference between this and this so that you're not doing the whole thing all the time.